In this CSS quick tip, we're going to be learning about the CSS color scheme preference property. Follow along. All right, in this sample, we're going to be looking at the CSS color scheme preference. And this is a fairly simple property, so let's just go ahead and get started here. Now you can see I've got three different demos set up for you. The first one here in the index.html just has a simple file over here with a single tag. So I've just got a header one tag, it's yellow and the background is orange. So let's jump over here to the style.css and you can see that set up there. Now the basics of this property is that it works inside of what is known as a media query. So if we come in here to this media query, we can create a property that is known as the style uh, prefer color scheme override. So let's just go ahead and say at media. And this works just like any other media query. So I'm going to say prefers dash color dash scheme as C-H-E-M-E. -E. And then I have two options here. I can either go with light or I can go with dark. So I'm going to start out here and just go with light. And I'll go ahead and do some overrides. So just like any other media query, the CSS inside of the media query will be triggered when the value in here is true. So in other words, if the user has their operating system set to prefer a light color scheme, the browser will automatically take over and apply that. Now, this is a little bit difficult to demo here because I can't manually switch this. It really depends on what your operating system setting is. So I'm going to go ahead and override the body tag, and I'll set this to background-color, and I'm just going to go with white. So as soon as I place this in here, you should be able to see that over here on the right-hand page, in the preview, it definitely gave me a white background. And that's because my operating system is set to light. But if you're on an operating system where it's set to dark, you actually should uh, see something different here when we set up our dark one. So I'm going to hit return a couple times, and then I'm going to set this to dark, and I'll just simply set this to 000 or black. So again, you may see white, you may see black. It really depends on what your operating system value is set to as far as the color scheme preference is concerned. Now, this is relatively new because it's only been in the last year or so that operating systems have allowed users to set light and dark color preferences. All right, in our second example here, let's just switch over here to the one called one.html. And let's go ahead and run this. Now, you can see here what happens is it's going to tell you via this keyword right here what your current preference is. So mine is reading light, but yours, again, may read dark. And the way this works is I just have some little CSS set up here. I'll switch over here and show you this. So on the root element, I've defined two CSS variables. One's called background, one's called foreground, and those are each set to a color. And then on the body tag, I'm using those CSS variables to decorate the background color and to decorate the text color. So in other words, mine is set up right now to use a light color scheme as the default text. Then down here in the media query, all I'm doing is I'm simply overriding this root variable and changing the colors. That's all I need to do. I can just simply change the variables in the media query, and then anywhere those variables are used throughout my CSS will be automatically updated. And then I just have this little uh, pseudo element here, the after element that appends the word dark if you're on a dark color scheme. And by default, it appends the word light right here on line 26. So uh, let's move down to the third example. Now, this third example actually does have a toggle, so I can toggle on and off the dark and light color scheme. Now, remember, this by default is applied automatically. There's no user preference involved here besides the operating system. But some websites opt to actually have a toggle like this one built in. So the user can come in here and click a button and switch to a dark color scheme or click a button and switch to a light color scheme. Now, if you did have something like this to where the user was able to set their own preference, you would, of course, have to capture this value and store it in local storage or a cookie or some sort of server setting in a database so that the next time the user visited your site, they would have their preference set and remembered. But the CSS in this example is very similar. So if we look at the CSS in number three, we simply have a root element that defines all sorts of colors for the uh, the actual toggle itself and for the background and font colors. And then down here, we just have some little CSS set up to make this little toggle button. And then down here, we finally have our media query. So again, if the user has a prefers color scheme of dark, we override all these variables. We change the 
toggled state of that checked with all the sibling elements so that we sort of get this little fancy little effect. But that is the simple gist of using CSS uh, color scheme preferences with the new media query that will automatically take that into effect.